you'll hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1. Section 1. You will hear a conversation between a student advisor and two international students. First, you have some time to look at question 1 to 5. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hello Sam, come on in. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks. Hi Andrea, how's things? Fine, thank you. I am a student advisor here for international students. This interview is a routine procedure to help international students get acquainted with Cambridge. I would appreciate your cooperation. All right. The answer is student advisor. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Hello, Sam. Come on in. How are you today? I'm fine. Thanks. Hi, Andrea. How's things? Fine. Thank you. I'm a student advisor here for international students. This interview is a routine procedure to help international students get acquainted with Cambridge. I would appreciate your cooperation. All right. Okay, then. Let's start with Sam. Sam, how did you feel when you arrived here in Cambridge? Well, I find it very peaceful here. Yes, obviously. Cambridge is very peaceful, especially the evenings are very quiet. Where do you live? I live in student hostel. Do you think student hostel is costly for international students? Well, not really. It only costs $125. Well, then what things worry you at the hostel? Concerns? Mm, the main concern is food. I dislike the taste of the food. Is it? Okay. I will send a note to the canteen department. Now tell me about your friends at the hostel. Frankly speaking, I couldn't make many friends there. Many of the students are reacting to open up. Oh, I am sorry to hear that. Well, what course are you studying? I'm doing bachelor's in business management. Fine. What made you select this? After graduation, I will fly back to Italy and expand my family business. Okay. So you are from Italy? Yes. What business is your family engaged in? My family makes leather shoes and jackets. I want to develop that business. Ah, great. And how are you finding your studies? Yeah, well, it's been pretty good, really. I really enjoy the course. I find the lessons very interesting and the lectures are very friendly. I love the way things are as of now. Fine. Is there any area of study that concerns you? Yes, there is one. The use of library resources. What problems do you face in that? I'm not familiar with using the library resources here, especially online library. Well, that's no good. Could anything be done to improve the situation in your opinion? Well, I think it would be helpful if there are more library assistants. Okay. I will talk to the library administration about it. Thank you for the information. Now let me ask Andrea some questions. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 6 to 10. Where are you from? I am from India. How will you describe Cambridge in a single word? Mm, beautiful. Yes, this city is beautiful in fact. And what about your accommodation? It's okay. I stay with a local family. They are very helpful and cooperative. Do you face any problems? Well, problems, yes. There's one though, not so important. They have three young kids. They make a lot of sound and make it difficult to study. Right, I see. Do you have a plan to move your accommodation? Yes, I'm planning to move out. I will get accommodation in a student house with my friends. Good. And what course are you studying? I'm doing a Bachelor of Computing. Computing? I see. How do you find the course? Well, uh, it's okay. But being an international student, I have language difficulties. Is that the main problem you face? Yes, that is the main issue I face. Also, I feel I am not getting enough time in the computer lab. Oh dear, why do you feel so? Because the computer lab is often busy. It is difficult to do my practical work in time. I see. Let me look into that and see if something can be done to improve things over there. This is the end of section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Section 2. You will now hear a tour guide talking about a wild safari in the Tiger Bat Wildlife Sanctuary. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Welcome to Tiger Bat Wildlife Sanctuary. I am your guide, Tim Hopkins. Before we start the safari, I would like to tell you a bit about the services, history, features, and feats of this sanctuary. This place is home to about 200 varieties of animals. To be more precise, here you can see 98 varieties of birds, 107 varieties of animals, and 23 varieties of reptiles. In fact, a few of these are very rare, endangered, and difficult to see. This animal park was the brainchild of the great animal lover Jim Corbett. During the colonial rule in India, he noticed the richness of wildlife in India and decided to do something to protect them. Thus, in the year 1825, sorry, a decade later, he established this wildlife sanctuary. Covers approximately 2,389 square kilometers of thick forest. Safari starts at 9 a.m and it usually takes four hours. We have an array of vehicles to choose from, depending on the size of the group. Only those between 22 and 45 are allowed to use a bike or bicycle for the safari. In addition, for safety purposes, people above 60 and below 15 will not be allowed to join the safari if they are not accompanied by someone between 20 and 50. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 20.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 17 to 20. Now, I would like to tell you about what you are allowed to and not allowed to during the safari. First of all, don't step out of the vehicle without permission. As you are aware, this sanctuary hosts a wide variety of animals and many of them are purely carnivorous. Therefore, getting out of the vehicles may land you in serious trouble. Secondly, don't go too close to any animal. As we know, many of these animals are naturally inclined to stay away from human activity. Therefore, getting close to them can provoke them and the result can be fatal. Thirdly, never feed the animals. The animals are properly nurtured by trained people. So feeding these animals yourself is not the wisest way to show your love. In fact, by doing so, you are creating a number of troubles. Firstly, the animal may harm you when you try to deliver eatables. Secondly, the food you provide may not be suitable for the animals. It will result in infections and illnesses. Finally, photography is allowed in this safari. You can take as many photos as you like. But there is one important thing for you to remember. This doesn't mean that you can open the glass windows of the vehicle. That is a strict no-no. Once boarded, you are not allowed to put any body part, leg, hand or head outside the vehicle. I hope. Now you are familiar with the rules and regulations of Tiger Bat. Wish you all a good time at Tiger Bat. Thank you. That's the end of section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3. You will hear a conversation between two students, Juan and Martin. They are talking about their research assignments. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hey there, Martin. Where were you? Loads of people asked about you. I was struggling with research assignment. Oh really? How's the progress? Good. Almost finished. Lucky you. What did you do it on? I'm still trying to find an interesting topic. Well... After some consideration, I decided to look at the history of Apollo space program. Really? What's special about it? There are so many things special about it. Really? Yes. Though I found it very boring at the first, my interest in the subject grew as I read more about it. Great. Where did you collect the relevant information from? Well, that was the toughest task. I spent two days to make a list of possible sources. Then I started exploring them one by one. Did you use the internet? Yeah. In fact, a lot. At first, I used Google search to find relevant information on Apollo program. But I was not sure about the reliability of the information available. So, I focused mainly on the websites of space agencies like NASA and ISRO. Great! I think you made great use of Computer Lab. Yes, really. 
I spend nearly two hours daily in the computer lab. But there's a lot of rush. I had to wait a long time to get a computer on many days. Oh dear! Why didn't you reserve a computer in advance? Reserve? How? You can contact the lab administrator and reserve a computer three days in advance. I read this information in the library manual. A manual? I haven't heard about it before. Poor you! A library manual is available at the desk of the assistant librarian. What else does the manual contain? Hmm. Library timings, fees, fines, book titles, new releases, advance reservation, and all other rules and regulations of the library. You will also get information about the use of online libraries. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions twenty-seven to thirty. Now listen carefully and answer questions 27 to 30. Have you ever tried online libraries? Yes, I visit online libraries like JSTOR and ProQuest. Once you visit them, you will become a great fan in no time. Is it? They are huge, they contain books, magazines, journals and research papers from across the globe. How can I use one? It is easy. Go to the assistant librarian and show your library card. The librarian will provide you with a password. From the home page of the library, you can select the subject area you want, like medicine, engineering or art. Then you can select the kind of source you are looking for, like articles, peer-reviewed research papers, books and so on. You will always find a number of relevant sources. What can I do if I find a suitable article? You can deal with it in three different ways. You can read it online for no additional cost, get a printout of the material for which you will be charged, or save the data for future use. For this, you will need to bring your own pen drive. Yes, I got it. Thanks. By the way, what is your topic of the assignment? Well, I am a bit at sea. I have a number of topics on mind, like bilingualism and cultural assimilation. But I haven't finalized yet. Really? I think you need to speed up your things now. Yeah, I'm too late already. This is the end of section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now, turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear a lecture on the animal reindeer. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Hi, 
Hi, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Today, we are going to meet an animal that deserves appreciation for its endurance. I said endurance because it lives in one of the worst habitats on Earth. That's the bleak Arctic plain or tundra and the surrounding forest and mountain areas. Within this harsh and freezing cold environment, reindeers live together in herds. The smallest herd may contain 20 animals, while the largest may contain thousands. The herd is almost constantly on the move. Over these years, reindeers have adapted remarkably to the harsh, barren habitat where food is scarce much of the year. Firstly, it is an excellent swimmer, aided by a thick coat that traps air and gives good buoyancy in the water. It can easily swim across wide rivers. The reindeer mates sometime between August and November, depending on location, but mostly in October. This is known as the rutting season, and the male becomes very aggressive fighting with other males as he competes to win control of a harem of 5 to 15 females. As the time approaches to give birth, the female leaves the herd and chooses a secluded spot. She usually returns to the same spot each year to calve or bear young. The calf is born between late May and early June. When the herd is at the summer grazing grounds, it weighs 11 to 20 pounds and can stand within minutes after being born. It suckles until it is five to six months old. Unlike many baby deer, the reindeer fawn's coat is not marked with camouflaging spurs because they are born in early summer. The calves have enough time to feed and grow strong before the fall migration. When predators are most likely to attack, the calves antlers begin to grow when the animal is a year old. The reindeer is a plant eater and eats a wide variety of vegetation. The main stays of its diet are the lichens and tough grass that grows on the tundra. In the spring, the reindeer will graze the newly sprouted shoots of grass and shrubs. The green leaves of birches and willows are eaten at the summer grazing grounds. During the harsh winter months, the reindeer has a difficult time finding enough to eat. It will dig holes in the snow several feet deep to get to the lichens and moss underneath. At the same time, it feeds on the twigs of any shrubs it finds under or above the snow. The reindeer is a valuable and important animal to the nomadic tribes of the Arctic regions, especially the Lapas. It's the only deer that can be domesticated. It provides butter, meat, cheese, clothing, and transportation. Its antlers and bones are used to make tools and utensils, and the tough sinews in its legs are used to make threat. The reindeer's range has decreased dramatically due to extensive hunting and the destruction of its natural habitat by man. The building of hydroelectric power plants has caused rivers to be diverted and large dams to be constructed in Canada and Siberia. The alteration of the natural landscape obstructs reindeer migration routes and causes thousands to drown. This is the end of section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
That is the end of the test. Now you have 10 minutes to fairly transfer your answers to the answer sheet. For more test hit the like button and subscribe our channel. Thank you.